enter the darkness of the Black Tarot, where sparks of light punctuate the midnight realm. From the incredible magnificence of artist Victoria Ivo, these 78 cards will offer you penetrating insight into the depths of your mind and soul. So that's the promo on the relatively new Black Tarot. Um, welcome back. Uh, it's me, Oberon, for Tarot for Today. Divine Dabblings with Oberon and Banshee. And of course, it's me here with a very dark Divine Dabbling. I'm doing the Dark Decks review. This is actually Volume 1 continued. I meant to do them both. Uh, but now, of course, <clears throat> I'm doing them separately, but I'm going to tack them on together. So Volume 1 does, in fact, include the Black Tarot. Uh, with me again are my cohorts, uh, Lady Esmeralda, who, of course, was the storied uh, second officer of the Mid Midwest Regional Local Council of Covenant of the Goddess, way back in the day, if you remember. <clears throat> And this is our newer acquaintance here. Uh, she just seems to be hanging around. Um, I think her name is Angelique, or at least that's what I think I want to call her. So they're both pretty quiet here, but uh, we're going to get on with the, uh, the show and tell of the Black Tarot. <clears throat> and I want to point out that um, it's a very stylistic and beautiful deck. And it comes, you know, with a, a design on the box. The box is not nothing special. It's put out by the uh, the Black Art Victoria. Is that it? It says the modified, expanded, and edited by Philip Young, PhD. Here's the thing: <clears throat> the entire book. Um, says literally nothing about this deck, nothing about the creation of this deck, this artist, the themes. Uh, it's very beautiful and aesthetically pleasing and dark, but we don't really know what or how this deck evolved or why it evolved. We just get the cards. So, I, I mean, the booklet tells you how to read the cards, what the interpretations are, some different readings. It's pretty good information. It's laid out well. But like I said, there's literally nothing on who these guys are, or why this deck was created. So without further ado, let's go to the uh, Black Tarot. And our first card is the Fool. <clears throat> and that's the Fool. So chasing the dream, as they say. And then we have uh, the Magician. And the High Priestess. The Emperor. And of course, it does follow the traditional number. This is number four. And it's a very interesting, mostly black with the white and grays penetrating, but the images are mostly very, very black. And, you know, frankly, they are hard in my eyes. <laughs> um, though I do hope to find, you know, maybe a, a specific usage. I can't see using this on our regular show, Tarot, for today. Uh, this is the Emperor. Um... But I might see using it for special types of readings. So stay tuned on that. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> the Herophant. And the Herophant looks like Prometheus holding, or Atlas holding the world on his shoulders. The Lovers. The 
chariot. Number eight, strength. Number nine, the hermit. Ten, the Wheel of Fortune. And so some of the cards are pretty compelling, and then some are, are not exactly like that. Wheel of Fortune, eh, it was okay, I guess. It's just a pretty perfunctual, really. Um, <clears throat> here's Justice, and Justice is sort of nice. I like that. Dark and light and crying. <clears throat> that is Justice, isn't it? <clears throat> the Hangman. Number 13, death. And then, of course, the uh, possible floor or walkway in the chariot is represented there. <clears throat> and 14, temperance. Fifteen, the devil. Sixteen, the tower. Seventeen, the star. Twenty, the moon. <clears throat> Again, it reminds me of the Wheel of Fortune. It's sort of like... Maybe there was an opportunity loss, or I'm not sure. Just sort of plainer. Then the sun, maybe similar in a way. It is a nice card, though. I mean, they are nice to look at. I just sort of feel like maybe we could have got more, but I'm not really sure what it would have been. I guess I have to admit that part. <clears throat> Judgment. And the world. So it's definitely an aesthetic. Let's go through the Minor Arcana, King of Wands, Queen of Wands, Page of Wands, Knight of Wands, The Ten of Wands, the Nine of Wands, the Eight of Wands. I like that. There is something plainish there, but yet at the same time, it compellingly tells you what it needs to. <clears throat> Mr. O has a gravelly voice today. Seven of Wands, and there's our floor again. Six of Wands. And the Five of Wands. Four of Wands. That's interesting. Three of Wands. Two of Wands. There's a surrealism about some of the proportionality of the figures that seem to be human, but then they're just oddly, surreally proportioned. Ace of Wands. The King of Spheres. So that's probably Pentacles. <clears throat> Hopefully I'll get a clue. The Queen of Spheres.
the page is serious. Now here, the anatomy seems better proportioned, but it's sort of like the qualities of the skin, you know, just sort of throw the perspective off. I don't know what the words are even. Artist people, help me out. Okay, so then here's the Knight of Spheres. Ten of Spheres. The Nine of Spheres. So I think it's Pentacles. Maybe that's Pentacles. The Eight of Spheres. The Seven of Spheres. The Six of Spheres. The Five of Spheres. Okay, so the Five of Spheres is always an interesting card. You know, it's sort of like isolation, but mostly like it's your feelings and you're just not noticing. So I, I sort of can get that from this card, but other readers may not. I don't know. So just saying that. All right, so then the Four of Spheres. And of course, that does look like the fellow from the Four of Pentacles in most most decks. Three of spheres. Two of spheres. And then that ace of spheres. All right, cups are cups. King of cups. Queen of Cups. The Page of Cups, looking sort of like a seahorse type being, humanoid hybrid. <coughs> Knight of Cups. Can't seem to get that glare off of that one. Guess the card is a lot brighter. Ten of Cups. That's a bit. That's plain. Nine cups. Plain old pip. Okay. I guess there's something there, but then we have the knight, the, the eight of cups, and movement, of course. The eights are movement oriented, generally. Seven of cups. That looks a little closer to an idea. Six of Cups, yes, I get that. You know, that crystal ball there into the past or whatever that is, the pleasures. Oh, look at this, the Five of Cups, and it looks like death again, moving through the terrain. Four of Cups. Three of Cups, the Two of Cups, and the Ace of Cups. All right, King of Swords. And these, the faces were actually more distinct than on the other quartz uh, cards with the other suits. That's the queen. So it's kind of interesting because, of course, swords represent, you know, striving and capabilities. And so we're putting a face to it, you know. There's sort of a little look of desperation about some of these folks. There's the page of swords. Or is that just me? The Knight of Swords goes back a little bit to surrealish. Reminds me a little bit of Alistair Crowley's Thoth Tarot Knights in a way. All right. Ten of Swords. 
the meaning is clear. Pip or not. Nine of Swords. Anguish. Eight of Swords. Yeah. Seven of Swords. I like that. That's very nice. It conveys that idea. The Six of Swords. It's a little bland. Ah, the Five of Swords. <clears throat> no one wins because you get creepy monster <laughs> person there. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Uh, four Swords. Namaste your hand from slain. Well, no, it looks like some of you is chilling. It's like, let's just chill. Let's not be warlike here. Three of swords, uh-oh. Rent asunder, torn apart. Two of swords. And then the ace of swords. So there you have it. Uh, it's another uh, dark deck that I have uh, shown us. And uh, I'll be looking to see what other dark decks I can bring up. My qualifications are basically that they are incredibly black-based, dark-themed, and that I have not used them, or very, very, very little, have not used them on the show, have not used them in other respects. Um, I just need to clear out the catalog a little bit because they've been waiting around for me either to unbox or review. And I know I do have a few more, so I hope to get them done this Halloween season. I'm also going to be doing a special uh, Halloween reading. Uh, it will be pre-recorded. It should be pretty fascinating. I, I don't have any details for you just yet. It'll be on Halloween night. So watch for that. Banshee's doing likewise. We might participate on each other's. It's all going to be a lot of fun. So we hope you will watch. These guys will be there. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.